So Geetek sent me their Miser S 3D printer, so let's check it out and see if it's any good. And as soon as you open the box, there is a tips sheet, and it addresses a lot of things that someone new to 3D printing would need to know. Like how you might need to adjust the rollers on the bottom of the bed, or switching over your power supply from 230 to 115, depending on where you are. And as you can see, everything is pretty tightly packed in some nice black foam. And like most 3D printers, it comes with some tools and some extra parts to put this all together. And oddly enough, it looks like it comes with a mouse pad as well. Or maybe it's a small work mat, I don't really know. And getting it all out of the box is a little finicky, seeing that it's attached to the bottom piece through a wire, and you can't unplug it. So if you do get one, just keep this in mind and be careful. But after removing that layer of foam, I'm able to get everything out and onto my workbench. And all that's really left are two foam pieces under the bed. And assembly is pretty straightforward, pretty much just attaching the gantry to the base, using four bolts that came with it. It also comes with all the tools needed to assemble this, but I'm using my own, seeing it's much faster. And since I already have it up on its side and have the tools out, might as well take off the bottom plate and see what is going on under the hood of this thing. And you can see everything looks pretty simple and tidy. Here's the main board. This is a 32-bit board with silent stepper drivers, so the machine is supposed to be really quiet. And the power supply is cleanly set up with crimped on connectors. But back over to the motherboard, there are no crimped on connectors or ferrules for the power supply or the bed. And I'm willing to bet there are just tinned wires in there. But anyways, with the bottom plate on, I can continue building this by putting the spool holder on. And it looks like something got spilt on this. It's not tacky and doesn't come off, and it won't affect anything, it's just a cosmetic problem. And you just kind of slot this into the top of the machine and bolt it down. And then just install the plastic part that actually holds the spool. And all I need to really do after that is plug everything in. And these are all very straightforward. There was one plug on the back that had nothing to go to, and it's because you need to install the limit switch. And if you did forget to install this, if you tried homing your machine, it would just go back and grind, and you'd have to turn it off and install this. And seeing that this is a Bowden setup, you have to plug in the tube to the extruder. And since we're talking about the extruder, this is a dual gear extruder that looks like a clone of a Bontech extruder. And this printer does have a magnetic build surface. That happens to be wrapped in plastic, so I need to take that off. Putting it back on though, it doesn't have any guides or anything to line up, so you have to do it manually. Which honestly isn't the worst problem, but it's nice to have. And for some reason these aren't installed on the machine, but for some reason they put bolts in where these go. And these are tensioners for the belts. This is easy enough to fix by just removing the bolt and screwing this in, but it's just a weird thing. And there's one on the x-axis as well. And I'm sure all these would work perfectly fine with the bolts in place. When it comes to the bed, it's all solid mounted, so there's no adjustment screws. But it does have a little bit of a wiggle to it, and like I said in the beginning, you just need to adjust the rollers on the bottom side of it. And there we go, all nice and sturdy. Well, after all that, let's remove this protective film, turn it on, and see if it actually works. Well, that's a good sign so far, so I'm just going to home the machine. This will test all the motors, make sure that they're all moving properly. And it looks like they're all working with no problems. So now I need to level the machine in the software. And this is totally new to me, but it tells you to use your wrench and push up on the nozzle to initiate the leveling process. And once you do this, it will preheat the nozzle and bed, and then start probing the bed. And seeing that the build surface is not conductive, this is just using a pressure sensor somewhere inside of the nozzle area. And obviously this type of sensor does work, but it is technically a moving part, so it will wear out over time. How much time? I have no idea. It might outlive the entire machine. But anyways, as it goes through and probes each area, it'll fill it in with green until it's done. And once it is done, you can go back and set your Z offset. I'm using a feeler gauge to do this, but you can use a normal A4 piece of paper. And in my past experience of doing this with a lot of other printers, this almost never ends up being right. So I'm going to have to adjust it on the fly in the first print. And speaking about printing, you can print directly from your computer using USB, or you can use a micro SD card, which I'm not the biggest fan of using because they're so small and hard to handle, easy to lose. But this one was supplied with the printer, so it has files on it for test prints. These are all pre-sliced, so I have no idea what the settings are. I'm assuming it's for PLA, seeing that they provide a small amount with it, but this kind of filament is normally trash, so I'm going to be using some build series PLA from Matter Hackers. And I've actually been using this stuff a lot recently, and it does a really good job. And it helps that it's pretty cheap, too. And this printer does have a filament runout sensor, which is nice to have, but it looks a lot different than any of the ones I've seen before. And loading the filament through the extruder is very straightforward. Just push the lever out of the way, and it just kind of goes in place. And for our first print, I'm just going to print the first one on the card. And now for the moment of truth, can I do baby stepping while printing? And I can. So I can fine tune my first layer. So as soon as it starts printing, I'm adjusting the baby stepping because it was a little too far away, and now it should be perfect. And in theory, it should save these settings, and the next print should be good to go just as soon as you start it. So this print's going to take a little over two hours to finish, and I really don't want to set up a time lapse for this. So I'm not going to waste your time and just skip ahead to when it's done. 
And here we go, I could just take the flex plate off, bend it, and pull it right off. And for some reason they added a raft to this, when it's really not needed. But you can see this printed out really nice, with little to no flaws on it. So I'm going to do another test print without doing any releveling or anything like that to see if it kept where I was. I'm also switching out the filament to a copper silk filament from Matter Hackers. And by the looks of it, it's a little off on one side, so it's printing a little too close. And I'd let it go a little bit longer, and it's definitely out of level a little bit. But it did make it past its first layer, so I'm just going to let it go and see what happens. And it did end up finishing, and looks really nice. But it is really stuck to the build plate. And this was printed in vase mode, so it's very thin, and I broke it trying to get it off. And even scraping it off left a lot behind. So whatever this material is, if you print too close to it, it is just going to kind of fuse to it. And after a good while of scraping it all off, this is as good as I was able to get it. But it's completely smooth to the touch, so it should be fine for printing on again. So I started another test file using the same material and did just a little bit of baby step adjustments and it printed out fine. And as you can see, this popped right off the build plate with no problems. And as you can see, this printed out with no flaws and it looks almost like this is a actual copper piece. And you can see on the bottom where it wasn't printing right and as I adjusted it, it got better towards the middle. I did have to use a scraper to get this off because it was so thin it was just bending with the sheet, but it came off in one piece. So that's all the files that it had on the card that it came with, so I sliced my own using Kira, but there are no profiles for this printer on there. So I just used a standard profile for the Ender 3, and it seemed to work with no problem or string or anything like that. And I really do hate printing useless things, like most of the test prints that come with the printers. But sadly, they're kind of needed to figure out if everything's working properly. And with that said, this is actually a miniature sanding block that it comes in really handy for sanding smaller things. And the larger parts just pop right off. And I printed this in a silver PLA from Matter Hackers. And when it came to the small threaded screws, the scraper got them off with no problem. And here we go, the finished sander with sandpaper in it. And like I said, the screws on this are threaded, so it also just screws together without any other parts. So when it comes to the marketing for this printer, it says that it can print in PLA, which we've already seen. PTG, yeah, I can see that happening. ABS might be a little bit harder, seeing that it doesn't have an enclosure, but it can be done. TPU, maybe, just because it has a dual gear extruder, but I don't see it working too well. And then it says it can do nylon and carbon fiber. Well, if you do carbon fiber, you're probably going to destroy your nozzle in one print, because it's just a brass nozzle, and it's highly abrasive carbon fiber going through it. And another problem with carbon fiber is normally you print it at a higher temperature, usually over 240 C. And the same thing with nylon. And that's typically not a problem if you have an all-metal hot end, which I don't believe this machine has. And if you start heating your Bowden tube over that temperature, it'll start off-gassing some really toxic chemicals. So I marked the tube before taking it out to show how far this goes down into the hot end. And as you can see, it goes all the way down to where the nozzle is. And they do have listed that the maximum temperature for this printer is 250C, so don't go up that high if you get one of these, without changing your tubing over or figuring out a way to change over your entire hot end. But don't get me wrong, this printer prints really good right out of the box, especially just doing PLA, and PETG will probably be the same. I just don't have any on hand to actually try it. And this does have some nice parts on it, like dual lead screws, with anti-backlash nuts on them, along with the filament runout sensor and dual gear extruder and the built-in auto bed leveling. I would suggest switching over the build surface to a PEI spring steel sheet, because whatever this material is, I think is going to be a problem eventually. Mostly because stuff sticks to it a little too well. And you can find one for about $20 to $30. Overall, a nice little printer. But I'd like to know what you think. Are some of the downsides to this thing a deal breaker, or are they workable? Go ahead and leave a comment below and let me know. And if you're looking for anything I used or talked about in this video, I'll have everything linked in the description below. Well, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.